the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Los Angeles Rams and the Dallas Cowboys coming up next. Just a gorgeous fall afternoon in the heart of Texas. No weather to speak of. Sun out, roof open. Yes, yes, and yes. A great day for football at AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, here in Dallas, winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. But this team this year may have even extra pressure on their shoulders in what might very well be the toughest division in football. And that extra pressure? will go on the offensive side of the ball. They'll need consistent play from the quarterback position because they are very explosive. And on the defensive side, they want to continue to take the ball away and make themselves contenders in the NFC East. And then for the visiting Rams, you know, they found out the hard way that you need a lot of good fortune when you win a Super Bowl title. And when you don't get that good fortune as they didn't last year, things can crash down to earth in a hurry. And none of us really saw this coming. Remember, they were 12 and 5 the year they won the Super Bowl. Won 5 and 12 last year. Somehow I think this Rams team is better than what we saw last season. Adding in a lot of new pieces in order to try and get back to the top of the NFC West. Two teams more than ready to get this one started. And we are underway from AT&T Stadium. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. So the Cowboys ready to go on offense for the first time. And it is their now 30-year-old quarterback, Dak Prescott, who leads the way. Prescott has some things to clean up from last season, leading the NFL with 15 interceptions and only 12 games played. But we can't overlook the good. 23 touchdowns and an 8-4 record as a starter as he led the Cowboys to consecutive postseasons for the first time since 2007. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They'll take that 14 yards on play number one. We often give credit to the O-line there. Two tight end formation. Those tight ends block pretty well also. Yeah, that's one of the most dynamic positions in football now. The tight ends who can block at the line of scrimmage at the point of attack, and they can also get downfield and catch the football. First down, and it's Pollard again. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and wing in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From just across the midfield stripe, here's second and six. Here's Pollard again. And some nice running going to get him down close to a first down at the Rams 44. But now he appears to be in some pain. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. This is third and one, very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Play action now, Prescott. He's got his target, that's complete. And he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Well, anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk-reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Now it's a bootleg with Prescott. That is caught by Lamb. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses. 
passes over out of bounds. 17 yards on the play there, and the Cowboys have a first down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Prescott. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. C.D. Lamb is intended target. That'll bring up second down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. They haven't been able to stop them so far in this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. They'll throw again. Prescott. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they've created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he will take it in for a Cowboy score. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Cowboys are on the board first here this afternoon. Right off the bat, they start with a very solid, methodical 10-play drive. And you know me, I tend to look at things from the defensive side. They're coming off the field gassed right away. We're in the first drive of the game. So it's not just what happened, but think of the emotion you carry into a game, then double it with getting a 10-play drive put on you and points scored. They're pretty tired right now. Point after, right down the middle. And that makes the score 7-0. team out there for the Cowboys as they run up to send this one away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. So here are the Rams set to go to work on offense. And they're led by a man who topped the 50,000-yard mark in passing for his career a season ago. In year 15 now, here's Matthew Stafford. Stafford, the Rams won it all in Super Bowl 56, but last season was a stark contrast to that. The Rams need their quarterback to recapture his form from two seasons ago to help spark another postseason run. And here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Defense gives up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to want to get out there and get those points back right now. And yeah, that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Stafford now to throw. And this one incomplete. Threw it down at the feet of his receiver. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. They'll try and run for the first time with Freeman. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Here's third and seven. And 
Now Stafford. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 43. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Gets throwing now an opening. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been a running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, Stafford. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Puka Nakua, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Rams are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point right down the middle, and we are tied at seven. That drive goes 80 yards in six plays. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Cavante Turpin now to return. Powering his way forward. And they got to be pleased with this. He brings it all the way up to the 40-yard line. Second drive forthcoming here for the Dallas Cowboys. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn it into a play action, and throw one deep. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Looking to throw, Prescott. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. First and 10. He's got it to the 43 here. From the 43, here's a second and seven. Prescott. He finds his man complete. It's Ferguson. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 39 yards there. A big one. You ask tight ends about their 
favorite routes to run, and surprisingly, this will pop up as one of their staples because they run so many routes in the middle of the field. How about this one? Starts downfield, bends it to the corner, great touch on the football, and they turn that one into a big play. They run here with Rico Dowler, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Rico Dowler, a three-yard touchdown run, and the Cowboys have taken the lead. But just power football there, down near the goal line. Give it to him, he's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in have to report like they're eligible, but all they're doing is getting a good stance blocking and getting their runner across the goal line. The extra point splits the uprights, and that makes the score 14-7. to seven. Kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Stafford. Pass complete there to Nakua. So the completion good for just three. And that will bring up second down. Brings up second and seven. At the 38 yard line. Play action. Stafford. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And the Cowboys are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. you got to know as a quarterback, this is going to be tough to outthink this guy in the defensive backfield. He's been at it 11 years now, so he knows all the ins and outs of the position, and he's in the right spot there to come up with the interception. Dallas offense set for this next drive. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, and right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. From the 38 now, here's a second down and six. Here's Prescott. Cooks on the quick slant. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And now one yard to go on third down. They'll try and run for it with Vaughn. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. And the Cowboys going to bring on Brian Anger to punt on fourth down.
And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at the 20. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. Back to throw, Stafford. Pass caught, it's been Skoranek. And he's gonna get this one across the 30-yard line. First catch for him, it's good for a dozen and a first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You gotta know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Stafford on first down. He'll get this one to Cup complete. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle, and they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Now that's now four completions in a row, a good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. Throwing again is Stafford. A quick throw there is incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Throwing at Stanford. Able to find the open man. That's complete. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter. So now, following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Stafford. He gets this into the hands of Cup once again. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. And the ball situated at the nine. Second and goal. They give it to Freeman up the gun. He's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Royce Freeman, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Rams are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play and actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive.
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series. But what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Here's Prescott. Out of his hands quickly to CeeDee Lamb. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Prescott and Lamb hooking up for the Cowboy first. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Running right, it's Pollard. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You can go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Now a second and six. Prescott to throw it. He finds his man complete. That's Ferguson. So the penalty rightfully declined. They'll keep the yardage on the completion. Still some disagreement by the defense, though, because he thought that was just good, strong coverage, and the contact's going both ways, so why is there a flag? In the end, though, doesn't matter. Still a completed pass. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Prescott now from the 50. And incomplete on the deep ball. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. On third down, it's Prescott. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Akella Witherspoon. And the Rams are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. Partner, I think this one went awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. And he's going to have a Rams first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Freeman again, a first down carry. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. And it's a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him. And the pressure gets to him and brings him down. Stafford is sacked. Damone Clark fought his way through and buried him behind the line. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside.
So now Stafford and the Rams after the sack. Now they're staring up at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And a throw there going to be incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. So on fourth down, on is Ethan Evans to punt for the Rams. Kavante Turpin deep for the Cowboys. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Dallas offense set for this next drive. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes, get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. They go back to Pollard on second down. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. In trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Prescott from the gun on third. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. And this time, they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 36. To throw is Prescott. here as he's taken down the perennial pro bowler Aaron Donald gets the sack okay I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there nowhere to go outside he had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up eventually dropped for a huge loss Now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. Now Prescott. He finds his man, Pollard. Touchdown, Cowboys! Tony Pollard, 51 yards. And the Cowboys have broken the tie. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is now 21-14. unit is out on the field and they will send this one away this fielded right at the goal line and he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line and now out on the field here comes Los Angeles they'll look for a drive to tie this up down 21 14 as they have it first and 10 they'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive J. Ron Curse in on the tackle. 
Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Now second and five. Freeman again. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. On first and 10, Stafford. He's got Higby complete right side. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Here's second and 10. Up the middle, Freeman. And he's got this one across midfield in the Cowboy territory. Five yards, now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Here's Stafford. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. This is Freeman on first and 10. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. So from the 25, this is second and five. Here's Stafford. Open man is Higby, the tight end. And he's going to have a first down on a gain of about 10, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. Stafford to Higby there, Rams first down. Now back to throw. Open man right side is Cup complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll make it second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And he's got it. Touchdown. Tyler Higby. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams are an extra point away from evening this one up. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes. <laughs> That's what we've seen with these offenses. Yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far and fun to watch. Extra point right down the middle. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime.
A couple of teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kicks away. And up to about the 26 yard line, just across the 25. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? I would have to think that would be the goal for sure. I don't think you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity. Push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. So minus a disaster on your part, you've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. Second and six. Looking to throw, Prescott. He finds his man complete, it's Ferguson. Now the Cowboys gonna burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Prescott now. That's into the hands of Gallup over the middle. The Cowboys gonna use their second timeout now as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. A second down throw for Prescott. And that's complete downfield to Cooks. And they move this all the way down to the nine. 25 yards that time. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up for the first and goal. First down now, but that clock rolling. And again, it's Prescott. Got his tight end. That's complete. That's Ferguson. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. Second and goal from inside the five. Throwing, Prescott. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll get you over to Orlando where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. started for the second half it was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard and he brings us out past the 20 to the 24 out come the Rams they'll have it first here to begin the third quarter this offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter well quarters number one and two entertaining we saw some good offense points put up Charles and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. 
And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? Here's Freeman again on second down. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 88 yards on the ground now for Freeman. He's got a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Now a first down throw. Stafford gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender, but the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Now Stafford. Going for the deep ball. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And the Cowboys are going to get the football here as he gets this up past the 20-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Following the interception, here's Prescott. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Aaron Donald picks up his second sack of the afternoon. And that's his second sack in this one. And you just can't ask a defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And partner, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. Even if he's not getting the sack, he's bringing a lot of pressure to the pocket. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Prescott. He finds his man complete. It's Ferguson. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards to play. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. They'll go with Pollard here on first down to about the 48-yard line. We've called a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. And they'll come up second and seven. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. This is caught, it's caught. This is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams 28. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start, and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. 
He gets it to Cooks. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Prescott to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end, and he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Now it's a bootleg with Prescott. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. So he'll be stopped here for no gain, and that's going to bring up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. They'll throw again. Prescott. That ball is caught. It's Gallup. Touchdown, Cowboys. Ten yards on the touchdown pass. And the Cowboys have taken the lead. So this game tied at the half, but we are tied no more. A touchdown there on the opening sequence of this third quarter. And what a great drive put together by their offensive coordinator. He had a plan, and they executed it almost to perfection, coming right out of the locker room. Now they're feeling good about their chances here in the second half. Extra point splits the uprights, and they will take a seven-point lead. Kick team out there for the Cowboys as they run up to send this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. From the 33, here's a second and eight. To throw is Stafford. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Throwing on third down, Stafford. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And at the seven yard line, the catch is made. Touchdown, Rams. Puka Nakua with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Rams are an extra point away from drawing level. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air, because right now, we're seeing a big time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Point after, right down the middle. And we are all tied at 28.
So right back to square one, tied at 28 as he kicks it away. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Dak and the Cowboys ready for their next possession. Last drive, surgeon-like, dare I say, seven for seven. That'll help your QB rating. <laughs> it will indeed, won't it? Can you figure out QB rating? Can you do I, it? Can no, you do the formula? No, I just know the higher the number, the better. Yeah, that's what I've been <laughs> that's told, what too. I know. I know that in the NFL, 158.3 is the number they're all trying to get to. I think he was that on that last drive. Second down and eight. Here's Prescott. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, it's Prescott. And Cooks has it over the middle. And he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, you can absolutely feel the thought process there. They just gave up the touchdown. So in the huddle, they're telling each other, you don't want to give it back now on a three and out. Nice job of making sure that they wouldn't, and they pick up the first down. They run straight ahead here with Pollard. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 55 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. That time, a little misdirection really seemed to fool the defense. And think of it this way. From the time you're in high school, you're taught to watch film and pick up tendencies. Sometimes they can use those against you, though, when they break their own tendencies and hit you back the opposite direction, huh? Going to run again here with Pollard. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, he's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks. And now here's a tackle behind the line. Prescott from the gun. Throw complete right side to Cooks. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Rams' 25-yard line. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. On first and 10, Prescott. Out of his hands quickly to C.D. Lamb. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll run with Pollard. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you, you want two. You're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Pollard. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. He lost four there, and it's third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, 
and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Prescott on third and goal. That he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Dak Prescott taking it in from seven yards away. And the Cowboys have moved out in front here in the final minute of the third quarter. Let's go back over Dak Prescott's career. Six rushing touchdowns in each of his first three years, but only one in each of the last two seasons. As a veteran, he's become much more judicious about when it's time to take the ball and go for the end zone. Extra point right down the middle, and they will take a seven-point lead. team out there for the Cowboys as they run up to send this one away. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and five. Back now in Arlington. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. Well, this offense hasn't been at their best here. They've made some mistakes. They've been frustrated. They've been largely shut down. But then you look up and say, wait a second. This is a one-score game. So they're still very much in this, and they're on the move here with a first down. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. From the 48-yard line, here's the second down and nine. Here's Stafford. And his throw is incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield with man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. The Rams on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is third and nine. From the gun, here's Stafford. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Micah Parsons showing off that elite athleticism as he gets the sack. Micah Parsons is off to one of the greatest starts in any NFL career. Two seasons, two All-Pro selections, two-time Defensive Player of the Year runner-up, and even some MVP votes last year. And behind all of that, 26 and a half sacks. Here comes the Rams punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 24. So the drive's going to start with Pollard. And able to break one tackle. 
tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. 60 yards rushing for him now to this point. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? And he'll get it out near the 30 to the 39. Now what a first down pickup of eight. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You take in charge. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. Second down and six now. Pollard will take it up the gut. And he'll be stopped at the 46, gain of three. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Trying to run for it with Pollard. Yeah, he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. On to punt now. Anger as he boots this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Back to throw. Stafford. Pass complete there to Nakua. It'll be a gain of five. And now we've got a third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Stafford. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point, and they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. So possession goes over here on the punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. A first down throw for Prescott. A short one there taken in by Ferguson. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From just shy of midfield, here's second and three. Looking to throw, Prescott. And it's dumped off to Pollard. His second catch, and this one not nearly as electrifying as his first. And it'll bring up third down now. I know it was a gain, 
but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. And he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Pollard going to try the right side. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. It's caught left side by Cooks. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. Now Prescott. Able to hit his target William. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Prescott. Another one to C.D. Lamb. He's got it. And the Cowboys are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before. And I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it. So they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. Prescott. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Line of scrimmage. Again, the four-yard line. Second and goal. They'll run left with Pollard. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. Every yard they gain, getting them better and better field position. And obviously, a field goal makes this a two-score contest. That's really all they need. And that means for your play caller, he's not looking to the attack portion of his sheet, right? He's looking for, okay, what do we have that's going to keep us in a good spot? No lost yardage plays. Let's kick a field goal, go up two scores. If we score a touchdown, great. But that's not what you're really playing for. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They come up on an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. touchdowns offensively. Hey, maybe it's time to get the kicker a little work and he's able to connect there. I love that empathetic side of you. You're worried about him getting some action, getting to be a part of the game. Well, he got in and got it done. Kick team out there for the Cowboys as they run up to send this one away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So now Stafford and the Rams down by 10. A minute 55 remaining. 
They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first, first and 10. Now it's Stafford. He's got Atwell. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and 10. Stafford now to throw. He'll get this one to Cup complete. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. Here comes second down and five. Stafford. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. And let's face it, this defense has had its share of struggles all game long, and they know that they can put it all behind them if they defend well here in the two-minute drill. Excellent coverage right there to force the incompletion. Well, this crowd doing their best to make a lot of racket. It's third and five. As to the sideline and pulled in. And yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. Yeah, you have to like the play calling because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. Now Stafford. Going to be taken in here by Nakua. And down inside the 15 he goes. Of course, remember, you need a touchdown here and a field goal. Doesn't matter the order, but they have to get it done and get it done fast. All three timeouts still remain. Keep that in mind. They prefer to use them on the defensive end. But here's first and 10. To the right side and complete to Atwell. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. Try to take on a Pro Bowl cornerback. And what a play there to make the interception and also bring it back for six. And he is so good that we've seen teams absolutely stay away from throwing the ball at him. Here, he's just reading the quarterback's eyes the entire way, makes a great play on the football, and turns it into six. Extra point attempt to follow here. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? 
but it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now it's Stafford. He'll go underneath with it, finding Freeman. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout, their second, as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Here's a second and five. Now Stafford. Throws left side. Atwell's got it. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Now a first down throw, Stafford. That's to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. Second and 10. Throwing again is Stafford. That's to the sideline and incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. One last throw here for Stanford. That is caught. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. And as this defense walks off the field, they can do so with their heads held high. What a performance by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. It certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camps, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best, and I think that's what we saw from both the offense